being combated by what the U.S. calls a terrorist force, Hezbollah, which in fact succeeded in driving Israel out of Lebanon. Uh, and you can't have, uh, allow uh, uh, anyone to struggle against a uh, military occupation when it's one that we support. So therefore, the U.S. and Israel had to vote against uh, the major UN resolution on terrorism. And I mentioned before that a U.S. vote against is essentially a veto, uh, which is only half the story. It also vetoes it from history. So none of this was ever reported, and none of it appears in the annals of terrorism. You look at the scholarly work on terrorism and so on, nothing that I've just mentioned appears. Uh, the reason is it's got the wrong people holding the guns. Uh, you have to carefully hone the definitions and the scholarship and so on so that you come out with the right conclusions. Otherwise, it's not respectable scholarship and honorable journalism. Uh, well, that's, these are some of the problems that are hampering the effort to develop a comprehensive treaty against terrorism. Maybe we should have an academic conference or something to try to see if you can figure out a way of defining terrorism uh, so that it comes out with just the right answers, not the wrong answers. That won't be easy. Well, let's drop that and turn to the fourth question. Uh, what are the, uh, a narrow one, what are the origins of the September 11th crimes? Here we have to make, this, sorry, make a distinction uh, between two categories which shouldn't be run together. Uh, one is the actual agents of the crime. Uh, the other is a kind of a reservoir of uh, at least sympathy, sometimes support, uh, that they appeal to uh, even among people who very much oppose the criminals and the actions. And those are two different things. Well, with regard to the perpetrators, in a certain sense, we're not really clear. Uh, the United States either is unable or unwilling to provide any evidence, any meaningful evidence. Uh, there was a sort of a play a week or two ago when Tony Blair was set up to try to present it. I, you know, I think the perp I don't exactly know what the purpose of this was, maybe uh, so that the U.S. could look as though it's holding back on some secret evidence that it can't reveal or that Tony Blair could strike proper Churchillian poses or something or other. Whatever the PR reasons were, he gave a presentation which was in serious circles considered so absurd that it was barely even mentioned. So the Wall Street Journal, for example, one of the more serious papers, uh, had a small story on page 12, I think, uh, in which they pointed out that there isn't much evidence, and then they quoted some high U.S. official as saying it doesn't even matter whether there's any evidence because we're going to do it anyway. So why bother with the evidence? Uh, the, the more ideological press, like the New York Times and others, they had big front page headlines. Uh, but the Wall Street Journal reaction was reasonable, and uh, if you look at the evidence, you can so-called evidence, you can see why. But let's assume it's true. I mean, it's a prima, it was astonishing to me how weak the evidence was. I mean, I sort of thought you could do better than that without any intelligence service. Uh, the, uh, in fact, remember, this was after weeks of, in, of the most intensive investigation in history of all the intelligence services of the Western world working overtime trying to put something together. And it was a prima facie, it was a very strong case even before you had anything. And it ended up about where it started with a prima facie case. So let's assume it's true. Uh, so let's assume that, as it you know, looked obvious the first day, still does, that the actual perpetrators come from the radical Islamic, here called fundamentalist, uh, networks, uh, of which the bin Laden network is undoubtedly a significant part. Uh, whether they were involved or not, nobody knows. It doesn't really matter much. Uh, but out, that's the background, those networks. Well, where do they come from? Well, we know all about that. Uh, nobody knows about that better than the CIA because it helped organize them. Uh, and it nurtured them for a long time. Uh, they were brought together uh, uh, in the 1980s, actually, in, by the CIA um, and its associates elsewhere. Pakistan, Britain, France, uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, uh, China was involved. They may have even been involved a little bit earlier, maybe by 1978. Uh, the idea was to try to harass the Russians, the common enemy. Uh, according to 
Carter, President Carter's national security advisor, uh, speaking of Brzezinski, uh, the U.S. got involved in mid-1979. You remember, just to put the dates right, that Russia invaded Afghanistan in December 1979. Okay. Uh, according to Brzezinski, the uh, U.S. support for the Mujahideen uh, fighting against the government began in six months earlier, and he's very proud of that. He says, we drew the Russians into, in his words, an Afghan trap by supporting the Mujahideen, uh, getting them to invade, getting into the trap. Uh, then we could develop this terrific mercenary army, uh, not a small one, maybe 100,000 men or so, uh, bringing together the best killers they could find, uh, who were radical Islamist fanatics uh, from around uh, North Africa, you know, Saudi Arabia, anywhere they can find them. They're often called the Afghanis, uh, but many of them, like bin Laden, were not Afghans. You know, they were brought by the CIA and its friends uh, elsewhere. Whether Brzezinski is telling the truth or not, I don't know. He may have been bragging. He's apparently very proud of it, uh, knowing the consequences, incidentally. But maybe it's true. We'll know someday if the documents are ever released. Anyway, that's his perception. By January 1980, it's not even in, in doubt. The U.S. was organizing the Afghanis and this massive military force uh, to try to cause the Russians maximal trouble. Uh, it was a legitimate thing for the Afghans to fight the Russian invasion, but the U.S. intervention was not helping the Afghans. In fact, it, pra it helped destroy the country uh, and, and much more. Uh, the Afghanis, uh, so-called, had their own it did force the Russians to withdraw, finally, although many analysts believe it tend, probably delayed their withdrawal because they were trying to get out already. Anyway, whatever. They did withdraw. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, terrorist forces that the CIA was organizing, arming, and training, carrying it, were pursuing their own agenda right away. It was no secret. One of their first acts was in 1981 when they assassinated the president of Egypt, who was one of the most enthusiastic of their creators. Uh, in 1983, one suicide bomber, who may or may not have been connected, it's pretty shadowy, nobody knows, but one suicide bomber drove the U.S. Army military out of Lebanon. Uh, and it continued. Uh, they have their own agenda. They're happy, the, U the U.S. was happy to uh, mobilize them to fight its cause. But meanwhile, they're doing their own thing and they were very clear about it. Uh, after 1989, uh, th when the Russians had withdrawn, they simply turned elsewhere. Uh, since then, they've been fighting in Chechnya and Western China and Bosnia, Kashmir, uh, Southeast Asia, North Africa, uh, all over the place. Uh, they're telling us just what they think. I mean, you know, the United States wants to silence the one free t television channel in the Arab world uh, because it's broadcasting a whole range of things from Powell over to Osama bin Laden. So the U.S. is now joining uh, the repressive regimes of the Arab world to try to shut it up. Uh, but if you listen to it, if you listen to what bin Laden says, it's worth it. I mean, there are plenty of interviews. And there are plenty of interviews by leading Western reporters, if you don't want to listen to his own voice, Robert Fisk and others. And what he's been saying is pretty consistent for a long time. He's not the only one, though maybe he's the most eloquent. It's not only consistent over a long time, it's consistent with their actions. So there's every reason to take it seriously. Uh, their prime enemy is the, uh, what they call the corrupt and oppressive uh, authoritarian brutal regimes of the Arab world. And when they say that, they get quite a resonance in the region. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, they also want to defend, and they want to replace them by properly Islamist governments. That's where they lose the people of the region, but up till then they're with them. Uh, from their point of view, even Saudi Arabia, the most extreme fundamentalist state in the world, I suppose, uh, short of the Taliban, which is an offshoot, uh, even that's not Islamist enough for them. It has even more than that. Okay, at that point they get very little support, but up until that point they get plenty of support. Uh, also, they want to defend Muslims elsewhere. Uh, they hate the Russians. Uh, like poison. But as soon as the Russians pulled out of Afghanistan, they stopped carrying out terrorist acts in Russia, as they'd been doing with the CIA backing before that in Russia, not just in Afghanistan. Uh, they did move over to Chechnya, where, but there they're defending Muslims against the Russian invasion. Same with all the other places I mentioned. 
uh, from their point of view, they're defending Muslims against the infidels. Uh, and they're very clear about it, and that's what they've been doing. Uh, why did they turn against the United States? Well, that had to do with uh, uh, what they called the U.S. invasion of Saudi Arabia. Uh, in 1990, the U.S. established permanent military bases in Saudi Arabia, which from their point of view is comparable to the Russian invasion of Afghanistan, except that Saudi Arabia is way more important. Uh, that's the home of the holiest sites of uh, Islam. Uh, and that's when their activities turned against the United States. Uh, you recall that in 1993, uh, they tried to blow up the World Trade Center. Uh, uh, got part of the way, but not the whole way, and that was only part of it. The plans were to blow up the uh, UN building, the uh, Holland and Lincoln tunnels, the FBI building, I think there were others on the list. Well, they sort of got part way, but not all the way. Uh, the person who was jailed for that, uh, finally, among the people who was jailed, was an Egyptian cleric uh, who had been brought into the United States over the objections of the Immigration Service, uh, thanks to the intervention of the CIA, which wanted to help out their friend. A couple of years later, he was blown up the World Trade Center. Uh, the, uh, uh, and this has been going on all over. I'm not going to run through the list, but uh, it's kind of, I mean, you can, you know, you might as well, if you want to understand it, it's consistent. It's a consistent picture. It's described in words. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, revealed in practice for 20 years. No reason not to take it seriously. Uh, that's the first category, the likely perpetrators. Uh, what about the reservoir of support? Well, it's not hard to find out what that is. Uh, there's some discussion. One of the good things that's happened since September 11th is that some of the press and some discussion has begun to open up to some of these things. Uh, the best one, to my knowledge, is the Wall Street Journal. Uh, which right away began to run, within a couple of days, serious reports, searching serious reports uh, on the reasons why people of the region, even if they hate bin Laden and despise everything he's doing, nevertheless support him in many ways and even regard him as the conscience of Islam, as one said. Now, the Wall Street Journal and others, are they're not surveying public opinion. They're surveying the opinion of their friends. Uh, bankers, uh, professionals, international lawyers, uh, businessmen tied to the United States, you know, people uh, they, who they interview in McDonald's restaurants, which is an elegant restaurant, they're wearing fancy American clothes. Uh, that's the people they're interviewing uh, because they want to find out what their attitudes are. And their attitudes are very explicit and very clear and in many ways consonant with the message of uh, bin Laden and others. Uh, they are very angry at the United States beca because of its support of um, authoritarian and brutal regimes, its intervention to block, block any move towards democracy, its uh, intervention to stop economic development, uh, its uh, policies of um, devastating the civilian society of Iraq while strengthening Saddam Hussein, and they remember, even if we prefer not to, uh, that the United States and Britain supported Saddam Hussein right through his worst atrocities, including the gassing of the Kurds. Bin Laden brings that up constantly, and they know it even if we don't want to. And, of course, their support for the Israeli military occupation, which is harsh and brutal. It's now in its 35th year. Uh, it's been, uh, the U.S. has been providing the overwhelming uh, economic, military, and diplomatic support for it, and still does. Uh, and they know that, and they don't like it, they, uh, 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 especially when that's paired with U.S. policy toward Iraq, toward the Iraqi civilian society, which is getting destroyed. Okay, those are the reasons, roughly. And when bin Laden gives those reasons, yeah, people recognize it and support it. Uh, now, that's not the way people here like to think about it, at least uh, educated uh, liberal opinion. Uh, they like the following line, which has been all over the press, mostly from left liberals, incidentally. I think, I haven't done a real study, but I think right-wing opinion has generally been more honest. Uh, but if you look at, say, at the New York Times, the uh, uh, first op-ed they ran by Ronald Steele, a serious left liberal intellectual, he said, he asked, why do they hate us? Uh, he's, this is the same day, I think, that the Wall Street Journal was running the survey on why they hate us. 
Uh, so he says, they hate us because we champion a new world order of capitalism, individualism, secularism, and democracy that should be the norm everywhere. That's why they hate us. Same 